According to Statista, Cheetos was the top ranked cheese snack brand in the United States with about 1.4 US dollars worth of sales in 2017. Cheetos is a cheese flavored puff cornmeal snack made to satisfy a human's taste buds. Like me, I'm sure all of you have tried or seen Cheetos snacks, but as a great enthusiast of Cheetos, I researched more about its history to understand where it started. Everyone knows what it's like to have their paws covered in Cheetos dust, but for the most part, people don't know, really know how this delicious snack was created and introduced. Today, I would like to review for you the history of the dankest, most scrumptious snack in the United States. Let me begin by telling you how the Cheetos snack came to exist in our world. Cheetos was the first snack food of its kind. According to the History of Cheetos website, Cheetos were invented, invented in 1948 by Fritos creator Charles Elmer Doolin, who cooked early test batches in the Fritos Company Research and Development Kitchen located in Dallas, Texas. Doolin embedded Cheetos because he believed that Cheetos would go well with a soup or sandwich. The cheese flavor snack sold quickly, but Doolin did not have the production or distribution capacity to support a nationwide launch. This led Doolin to partner with potato, chi potato chip businessman Herman W. Lay for marketing and di distribution. And Cheetos were introduced nationally in the U.S. in 1948. The success of Cheetos prompted Doolin and Lay to merge their two companies in 1961, forming Frito Lay Incorporated. At the time, Cheetos was one of four large food snack brands produced by the company, which had annual re revenues of $127 million and looked to expand their market globally to further distribution of Cheetos outside of North America. They, so they merged with Pepsi Cola Company to form PepsiCo in 1965. As of today, Cheetos are produced, marketed, and distributed under three different PepsiCo operating divisions, PepsiCo America's Foods, PepsiCo Europe, and PepsiCo Asia, Middle East, and Africa. This brings me to my next point. How are Hot Cheetos created? Which are my favorite, I'm the chief of Hot Cheetos Addy. And um, Hot Cheetos were introduced in 1976. Uh, in an article by Cynthia Tan of Inc.com, she explains that the person who created this amazing snack is known as Richard Montañez, who worked as a janitor at the Frito-Lay Rancho Cucamonga plant in, uh, in California. Uh, call it luck or, call, or craving, but Montañez said it, it all began while eating a lote. And a lote is a Spanish term for corn. And um, if you live like, in Spanish neighborhoods, you'll see like, the corn man and his cart and he'll be honking a horn. And, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> He thought to himself, I see the corn man adding butter, cheese, and chili to the corn. So what if I added chili to a Cheeto? He then took some Cheetos home that weren't dusted with cheese and added some spices and made a test batch for his family and co-workers. Everyone loved his test batch of hot Cheetos, so he decided to call up the president of Frito-Lay and said he had a new idea for a product. Uh, Montañez was granted an interview to pitch his new idea. Since he was uneducated, he decided to copy and paste a uh, marketing strategy that he found in the library and even designed his own bag of hot cheetos um, that he presented to the president of Frito-Lay. The president loved his idea that he promoted him to executive VP of sales. Since then, the Flaming Hot line of products was born, including Flaming Hot Cheetos, which is Frito-Lay's Frito top selling snack today. Um, also, I tried finding out like how other types of cheetos were created, but all Frito-Lay provides is a YouTube channel where Kathy Dial, Director of Consumer Affairs, explains that they have culinary research scientists working in labs creating these new flavors. This now brings me to my last and final point, which is how did Cheetos become a popular, become so popular? It might be the help to, uh, it might be thanks to the help of their mascot. Um, so I, really, I always thought like Chester Cheeto, or the Cheeto was the original mascot, but I found out that he wasn't, that it was actually this nice. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about a brief, brief history of the Cheeto mascot. The original Cheeto's mouse never could live up to be as popular as a Chester Cheetah. This guy right here. And uh, so yeah, the Cheeto's mouse was a. The Cheeto's mouse was originally designed by Paul Coker, and debuted in 1971. Having a mouse for a ma mascot made clear sense because um, by reputation, like mice like cheese, 
but fortunately it wasn't like popular or cool enough. So the uh, the current Cheetos mascot, Chester uh, Cheetah, he was created by Brad Morgan, and he kind of got the idea from the Pink Panther, I guess. So that's what gave him the idea of making Chester the Cheetah. And uh, he did not actually, and Chester the Cheetah did not actually drive out the Cheetah's mouth from his position, but um, like the mouse, he like lost the spotlight and just faded on his own, and he was out of commission. So that's when Chester Cheetah he was created in uh, 1986, and from the beginning, he was everything that Cheetos mouse was. He was cool, passionate, and relatable. Um, he uses sl slogans like "It ain't easy being cheesy," the cheese that goes crunch, and from 19 from 1986 to 1997 until it became da dangerously cheesy from 1997 onward. From the mid-1980s to early 2000s, television adverts often featured Chester's desperate attempt to eat other people's Cheetos. The self-described hip kitty was often seen sneaking up or uh, on unsuspecting uh, strangers at a bench or public park. Um, with all this being said, I'm very excited for what the future holds for Cheetos, and hopefully they will create a new flavor that we could all fall in love with. Thank you. You should have brought some Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you told me that it would take too much of a process to add out Cheetos. I just toss them around. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you guys are going to feel bad now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I love some Cheetos. <laughs> and you may know what that month is. I'm hurting my month. Oh, for real. I've been yeah. passing through my bad lately, so hopefully. But. Do, you like, <laughs> do you like the really hot ones, the triple X ones? Oh, the hot Cheetos? But like the yeah, hot I got like favorite. a nice Arizona on the side, but it's too hot. <laughs> All right, Ashima, what did you think? Um, I liked how you explained everything, and then um, I liked your visuals. It kind of like kept me interested in like listening to what you were talking about. And I liked how you like pretty much. I liked how you explained everything, and then it was kind of funny. So like, yeah, I just like kept me hooked. I'm not listening to the whole thing. Oh, um, you talked a little too fast, but I think overall you did a good job. <laughs> All right. Well, I like the statistics and the fact factual data that you use as an attention device. I thought you had a really good transition to the topic, a very clear purpose statement. Uh, the preview needs to be a little bit more uh, detailed, letting us know what the supporting structure is going to be. It's primarily chronological in organization, which is fine. Uh, and uh, the transitions in the body of the speech are okay. I think that you uh, have a lot of information in the speech. You're not always citing the sources for the information, but I didn't think that you were making up to the stories that you were telling us. And I thought it was great that you kind of talked about how the two companies came together, the, how they merged with PepsiCo. That's great, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And then the story about the one guy who created the Flaming Hot Cheetos, for instance, you had good detail in there. There's interesting bits and pieces of information that tells a story that makes it a lot more interesting and involves us a lot more. Uh, you heard the audience's reaction to the visual. I mean, they had no idea that there was another mascot, and they all laughed at the mouse sitting there and say they appreciated that. No, his, no historical context for the the young audience that you're dealing with here, but uh, I, you know, I thought that worked really well. I do think that you want to hide your first visual until you're ready to kind of introduce the topic instead of having it right there. Uh, I thought it was a little slow moving to a couple of the visuals at a couple of spots, uh, but uh, when you did get to the uh, two mascots, for instance, that they were easy to see and they pointed, you know, you pointed out what it is that you wanted to talk about them, and you had some interesting information there. Now, it sounds like some of the information that you've got is stuff like it's right off of the press releases for the company, right off of their website. You need to tell us that so that it, you, know, you don't want to be accused of plagiarizing anything, and I know that you did research on this, and it's all going to be in the bibliography, but you got to get it into the speech, too, so that we know that that's where you're getting this information. Because the, the story that you tell about the one guy is, is nice, it's got good detail in it, but some of it sounds like, you know, 
you're reading something instead of something that you wrote yourself. So it, it, you, you want to make sure that you give credit where credit is due. And one of the examples, and again, it's a delivery thing that's not heavily emphasized on this. Uh, debut is the word, and you, you, you looked at that word and you said it. I can't even remember. Debutted, or you, know, you said something that was a little bit awkward, and I've gone, ah, oh, you know, this is definitely quoted material. He didn't write this himself and it needs to be cited as a consequence. And those, those are always the tip-off kind of stuff. When it sounds like you're reading something or the pronunciation's just a little bit off, you say, this is something that he, he got someplace and he's not quite sure how to say it because he didn't put it together himself. And that's the sort of stuff that you ought to, got to work on. Um, this is a fun topic. It's about a subject that you're interested in, and there's so much of it that you're reading from a big piece of paper that it's a little frustrating. You know, you, I think everybody enjoyed this. You know, they're all hungry. They they wanted those damn Cheetos at the end of the speech, and you didn't have them. Don't worry about that. That's a, a big deal. But you can tell the subject's going to pull people in, so you need to be talking to us a little bit like, hey. I can hey. Go to the machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, and the way you just talked right now, that's kind of the way you ought to be presenting the speech a little bit. Hey, you know, when I pull up for a snack, you know, I'm not looking for, you know, some lazy ass to, uh, potato chip. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want some pretzel that is so boring. I want something that bites me back when I bite into it. And you know what does that for me? The flaming hot Cheetos, you know, that kind of stuff. You gotta talk like you're a person, not like you're reading something to us. And uh, I, I want you to be prepared. I want you to have the information, but don't forget that you're also giving a speech. Yeah. So uh, we've spent a lot more time than I usually do on the presentation aspects of you guys' evaluations yeah. because you've been doing a good job on most of the other things. So this is just an opportunity for me to point out stuff that needs to be fixed, and that's the most obvious thing that's jumping out. You guys are good on this next round of speeches, for instance. You're not going to have any notes in your hand. Oh to speak from, oh, we're not going to let you use notes, oh, so you got to know your subject well. Some of you are going to be choosing to do a, an impromptu presentation, so there isn't any opportunity to use notes because you're thinking off the top of your head. But if you do a prepared speech, we don't want you to have any notes in your hand. You've got to talk to us. All right, thank you.